Hi, how's it going? I'm Ina Golden, and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so um, I know I've done a couple of very LGBTQ plus type topics on the last couple of vlogs, and I'm not going to stop here. Um, so I was watching a video about something um, the other day and um, although the person who was presenting the video was clearly very open-minded and very compassionate towards um, people of varying gender identities, they did say something that sort of bothered me a little bit, um, which was to say that being non-binary is a choice. Um, I don't think they meant anything disrespectful when they said it, it's just not the choice of words that I would have used there because speaking as a non-binary individual myself, I don't believe that being non-binary is a choice. I believe it's a choice to come out as non-binary but you would still be non-binary even if you didn't make the choice to come out as non-binary. Um, in the same way that you would still be uh, transmasculine or transfeminine if you didn't decide to come out as such for whatever reason. And in a lot of these cases, it's for your own personal safety or because you just haven't reached that point in your journey yet where you feel like you can come out. Um, but it does, you know, just because you've not come out doesn't mean that you are not the thing that you are. It just means that you are publicly presenting in that way. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I know this seems like a little bit of an odd one for me to sort of, uh, well, not necessarily an odd one for me to start off with, but uh, I don't usually sort of go, oh yeah, I've, I've heard this thing. I want to make my own sort of comments on it. Um, as I said, it was one of those things which has sort of been playing on my mind um, since I heard it and, and since um, since watching that video. As I said, everything else about what they were saying and how they were, they were speaking was very, very respectful towards gender identity um, and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that they, they are somebody who is, is ignorant in any way, shape or form or somebody who is unsupportive in any way, shape and form. It's just that choice of wording, um, that being non-binary is a choice, um, just did not sit particularly comfortably with me. And I felt like the best way for me to sort of express why um, is to sort of talk about the experiences that I have had personally and why I feel like I would be non-binary even if I hadn't made the decision to come out as non-binary at the point in time that I did. I, just, I feel like I would still be non-binary and I would still be struggling um, with my non-binary sense of identity that I was struggling with before I decided to come out. Um, the, the choice was to come out, the choice wasn't to be non-binary. Um, so I think I mentioned this uh, a little bit at the time that it was coming out. I don't remember if I mentioned it specifically in the blog or in a uh, Facebook post that I did at the time. Um, but I can remember very much being a child and having this sense that I wasn't just a girl. And I don't mean that in that but, but slightly sexist viewpoint of, oh, they're just a girl. Um, they can't X, Y, and Z because of that. Um, it was very much in a sense of, I feel like I'm more than just this one thing in terms of my gender, but I wouldn't have necessarily been able to put that into words at the time. Um, I think when I have sort of talked about what I was actually thinking, what I was actually feeling at the time, was that I felt like I was somewhere between being a girl and being a tomboy. When actually in reality, I think what I meant was I was somewhere in between being a girl and being a boy. But I was growing up in the 90s. Um, and, you know, the idea of being non-binary wasn't something that was in the ethos back then. I mean, it was definitely a thing. Um, non-binary identities and um, gender identities outside of the binary have existed for centuries. Um, in some cultures, they're more prevalent than other cultures. 
but it is it's always been a thing it's just in the 90s in the society that i was growing up in it was not something that was talked about it was not something that was widely recognized it was not in the general you know environment that i was growing up in so the only way that i could have explained how i was feeling was that i i was definitely not just a girl um, i resented anybody who even you know tried to think of me as being just a girl because i knew that was not what i was um but the only words that i had access to and the only language i had access to was that i was somewhere between being a girl and being a tomboy because even the idea of, of suggesting I was somewhere between being a girl and being a boy was not something that I would have said back then because again even though you know um, transgendered individuals existed before that point in time it was not necessarily something that was widely talked about widely known widely recognized a lot of this stuff was not stuff that I would not would come across until my mid to late teens um, just because you know there, there was not access to that information there was not access to the words that i needed to describe how i was feeling all i knew was i wasn't just a girl and the bit of me that wasn't just a girl was like a boy but i couldn't really put into to the exact words why or how that was i just knew that was what was going on with me um and it wasn't something that i you know talked about because you didn't you know <laughs> you know it was it was a case of um it was just i knew it was how i felt i knew it was how i thought but because i couldn't really put it into words it wasn't necessarily something i you know went about expressing in a particularly vocal way because as with a lot of things in my life i don't think anybody would care um, you know, I was raised in a home environment that never restricted me or my brothers and never pigeonholed me or my brothers into any particular way of being. Um, I was allowed to play with my brother's toys, my brothers were allowed to play with my toys if they wanted, um, you know, they, <laughs> um, in, in fact, you know, we, we did, there was a lot of co-collaboration. Um, and I, 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 I think it was more me playing with their toys than necessarily them playing with with my toys um but you know there were plenty of afternoons where me and my little brother would just create villages with our piggy bears um and, and stuff like that so there was never this sense of i was particularly othered because of the body that i was born in compared to the body that my brothers were born in we had varying interests, uh, we had varying skills, um, but I was just, if not more so adventurous than either of, than either of they were. Um, so, I mean, I did have a sense a lot of wanting to sort of keep up with them and wanting to prove that I was just as good as them and having that sort of competitive drive in me when it sort of came to, you know, a lot of different things. Um, certainly, when we we're in the outside world, um, I wanted to be viewed as being like them, um, but sort of like privately, because yeah, we didn't get on perfectly. Uh, yeah, we we fought and this, that, and the other because you know we were siblings. That's what siblings do. Um, but there was definitely this uh, this very definite kind of sense when I was sort of in the outside world. I wanted to be viewed as being one of them and doing all the things that they were doing so I was much more aware of um, how I sort of felt about things when we were out of the house and doing stuff necessarily compared to when we were in the house doing stuff because I was fortunate enough to grow up as I said in a household where you know there was no kind of, oh, that's a girl thing and that's a boy thing. There was never any definite sense of that um, within the household that I, that I grew up in. And I'm very fortunate for that experience because of that. So like when I was at home, I was basically free to be comfortable acting and doing what I wanted. Well, like, except for stomping. <laughs> I was very heavy footed. Apart from that, <laughs> you know, there was, there was a lot of freedom for us to express ourselves in whatever way we, we wanted to express ourselves um both my brothers have long hair now they both went through long hair phases um as teenagers they both had hairs at various lengths and in various styles and 
it's always been something that my parents have um, both individually supported for them um, because you know they again there's always been this sense of freedom of expression and freedom of being who you are um, growing up which I think for somebody growing up um, who is bi-gendered and who is uh, non-binary it's a very useful thing to have but it can also make things a lot more confusing when you do sort of reach that point of trying to figure yourself out because what has been normal to you um, isn't necessarily normal in the sense of uh, wider uh, social norms um, and you know it's, it's one of those things that I will sometimes say that I didn't realise that um, video games were considered more of a boy thing than a girl thing until I was in my 20s because not only were there was there nothing wrong with me playing video games as a kid um, and I would quite frequently play with with, um, with my brothers and I ended up with both of their consoles <laughs> at one stage or another I had my own consoles which was like the, the Game Boy stuff uh, because I'm much more of a handheld gamer than I am a console gamer um, but all the friends that I had were also gamers um, and they were also all assigned female at birth. So to me, you know, the idea that gaming wasn't also a girl thing did not make sense. Um, and I was actually quite surprised to find out that it, that was, you know, the wider opinion um, when I was a teenager. Uh, when I was when I was a late teen, early adult, so like when I went when I went up off to university, um, as it were. Um, so yeah, it, like having a sort of a, coming from sort of a background where you know gender norms have not really been enforced and have not really been worried about um, makes it very easy for you to become sort of very comfortable with the idea that you know gender norms aren't what they necessarily are and um, when you sort of like realise well actually no how I am is not necessarily you know this that or the other it, it's yeah it, it's kind of it can kind of make things a lot more complicated and a lot more confusing because you know we, we're also living in a world I want to say we're living in a post-gender norm world we, we're not but we are living in a world which is much more accepting of the idea that, you know, gender norms are stupid. <laughs> as it were. Um, so, yeah, I also had that kind of experience of going from a, you know, growing up in a household where gender norms were not enforced to sort of spending, uh, very much spending my like late teens, early 20s learning that, oh, no, actually, a lot of the things that I didn't think were gendered um are actually you know considered to be this or considered to be that and um and then sort of moving into my late 20s where oh no gender norms are being destroyed again um so that in a lot of ways made things a lot more confusing for me but this kind of sense that i wasn't just a girl persisted um i think as i've mentioned before uh going into my teens is very much when i sort of also developed this um, male alter ego for myself, um, who I thoroughly embraced and I don't think there was ever a point where I ever wanted to be just a boy either, um, but I certainly wanted to be recognised as being both, even if I still could not have put that into words at that time. And then moving into my late teens, early twenties and wishing desperately that you know certain things were not an obstacle for me um going out and presenting as masculine and passing as masculine or passing as something other than um female and that kind of frustration and, and that kind of wondering well, why am i having these kinds of thoughts um and this is also around the time when I did start getting access to information I previously didn't have access to. So I did start watching documentaries um, about being transgendered. I did uh, start doing research because I was like, well, I don't feel like I'm, I'm necessarily 100% a boy, um, but I know I'm definitely not 100% a girl either. It, you know, is, is there something for this? Is there, you know, it, is it just me? Am I just, you know, being crazy? Is it just the way that I've been raised? You know, um, and then I came across the term um, 
gender fluid in sort of my, my early 20s, which felt like it explained a lot of what I was feeling. It felt like something that kind of fit me. Um, it's kind of just unfortunate that at that point in time, um, there are a lot of other things going on in my life, which meant that I couldn't fully explore what being gender fluid would have meant. Um, obviously, since then, I have learned that, no, I'm, I'm more bi-gendered than I am gender fluid. But certainly at the time, um, it was something that, again, because I have this very, very strong self-perception of um, like my breast standing in the way of me looking anything other than cis female, um, I very much at the time felt like, oh no, people will just think I'm being silly, people will just think this, that and the other, and I'm not like an overly self-conscious person. I don't overly worry about what other people think about you know, who I am and what I'm doing. I am very much a free spirit. When it came to this, I think because it was something that was so important to me and, and so critical to the core of my being, um, that the idea that anybody could, you know, might mock me for it or might think I was being stupid or might think that I was attention seeking for it, um, just got me in a way that most other things haven't. Because, um, I, you know, I, I, I was bullied growing up, so, you know, I'm, I'm used to being, you know, mocked and sort of, you know, turning a blind eye to it and just, you know, getting on and just being me. And, I'm, you know, I am a very strong individual. I'm a very self-assured individual. But because this one thing was so fragile within me, because it was so true to the core of myself, um, that I just felt like at that point in time when I still had a lot of questions, where I still didn't fully understand why I had the thoughts and the feelings that I did. I just knew that I did have them. I sort of privately acknowledged um, this, this uh, idea of me being gender fluid, but I didn't do anything publicly about it because I just felt at that point in time I couldn't. Um, and it is around that point, point in time where my brain started asking the question, why can't I be both? 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 And it was, and it had been, it was constant. <laughs> it was constant, like, pretty much in the background of my head, like, uh, the, the entire length of time from when I found out about what gender, being gender fluid meant, to the point in time where I came out as a non-binary, um, there was just that constant, persistent voice in my head, in the background, going, why can't I be both? Why can't I be both? Why can't I be both? Um, which came with a lot of other thoughts and feelings, um, a lot of them to do with some body issues that I do have and, and, and stuff like that, which I don't really want to get into too much right now. Um, but there was definitely a part of me that was just constantly wanting there to be some way of proving that I was both somehow so that, you know, I could just say, oh, hey, yeah, I am actually both and it would give me that excuse to, to come out and, and stuff like that. And then obviously I realised that was never going to happen. <laughs> but there it was just this, this persistent kind of hope, this kind of wish that I would just wake up one day and there would be evidence that I would be both. And I still get that. <laughs> I still get that a little bit. Um, I still get that a lot. Um, but I realise now that, you know, I can be both with the body that I have. Um, I can be both by maybe going through a medical transition to better reflect that in my body. I don't need to. It is still something I need to sort of decide and figure out for myself what is the right path with that. Um, but it is it, it is still like persistent feeling in me, in me and it is still something that I feel like it's not going to go away until I've figured out what the right options are for me. Um, if I haven't managed to figure out what the right options are for me. Um, but it is, it, 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 it has been this sort of persistent thought, this persistent idea, you know, for a long time. It's not something that, you know, I just suddenly woke up and made a choice to be non-binary. It is something that has been persisting since my childhood and has just become better defined as I've grown up. Um, but because, because I did, learned about being gender fluid in my early 20s and then kind of denied myself the opportunity to explore 
my identity beyond that and to really understand what that meant or if that was the right label for me, which it turns out it wasn't. <laughs> um, because I didn't, I, I mean, I've mentioned this before, I became very apathetic towards my gender in my late 20s and into my early 30s. Um, and I think that was a general sign of depression of, yeah, I embraced all the other craziness that was me. I, I've always been very true to, you know, you know, my personality has always been my personality, but because I was denying this part of myself, it was like this part of myself was missing and it made me very apathetic. I, it made me, I'm going to say probably slightly depressed, even if not necessarily on a, on a wider scale, but it was definitely this thing that I thought about a lot and I wondered about a lot whilst I had all these other thoughts and feelings going on in my head. But because I sort of reached a point where I was, I was suppressing it quite a lot and I was very apathetic with it, um, it made it a lot harder for me to sort of define what was going on and to sort of put into words what I was feeling. But the one thing it, it definitely did do, and this is something that I, um, I hadn't mentioned in the earlier parts of this, so I will um, talk about it now, is it did add to the feeling of not being a real person that I had from my teens. Um, and I was more than aware of major part of the reason I stopped feeling real as a teenager was because I was going through an identity crisis. And at the time, it was also an identity crisis to do with, with my sexuality and not just with my, my gender identity. Um, but it was an identity crisis that persisted because although I be, be sort of like slowly was embracing um, my sexuality because I wasn't doing giving the, the same attention to my to my gender identity and to figuring out um, my my non-binary I my, my non-binary self um, that feeling of not being a real person was probably a feeling of not being a complete person, not being a fully actualized person, because although I was embracing so much of myself, um, I was denying a, a huge chunk of who I was. Um, so that feeling of, of not being a real person and um, was basically a feeling of that there's something missing from the equation here. There is something that is a part of me that I'm not talking about and I'm not thinking about and I'm not doing anything about even though it is still a part of me and I'm still sort of acknowledging that it's there, I'm just choosing to ignore it and it doesn't really make sense that I'm ignoring it. Um, so that feeling of, of not being real persisted from the time that I was a teenager until the time I started coming out as non-binary. Um, so I can very much say that that feeling that I had, that, um, that feeling that persisted for so many years, that was very cool to the identity crisis that I was going through was very much there because I was not embracing the fact that I was not binary. Um, so again, it just, to me, anyone who's sort of like, I mean, even if they don't mean it in the way that it sounds, says the words being non-binary is a choice, doesn't really understand that a non-binary individual struggles a lot to try and understand their identity and them coming out when they decide to come out, if they decide to come out, isn't them choosing to suddenly be non-binary, it's them reaching the point in their journey where they understand themselves enough to know that they are non-binary. Um, that is, is very much what it is, it's not uh, a sudden decision to, to suddenly be something else, it's they've suddenly reached a point in their journey where they feel like, okay, this is what I am, and I feel comfortable coming out and letting people know that this is what I am. It does not mean that they fully understand what it means to be non-binary for them. Um, non-binary identities grow and change just like any identities grow and change. Um, so, you know, how a an individual sort of feels at the point of time when they start coming out isn't necessarily how they'll feel in a year or two years or three years from that point uh, because it is a journey, it is a, um, it is, uh, 
an exploration of, of yourself and who you are. And if you have spent a long part of your life ignoring this part of who you are or denying this part of who you are, it can take you a while to fully realise everything about this part of who you are and, and to fully understand everything about this part of who you are. And it's okay to go through some sort of some transitions and some changes and some better understanding of, of what it is and what it means and what you ultimately want um, from your sort of transition and, and, and stuff like that. So it's, you know, yeah, a non-binary identity is difficult to understand and it's just as hard for the non-binary individual to understand. But it's the same with anybody who, um, reaches a point of realizing hey this thing that i've been struggling with is actually this and i'm going to embrace it will go through a period of learning what that means to them and, and that that's it you know um sexual orientation gender identity um a lot of other things as well like you know it, it, i don't think it's just like an lgbtq plus thing i think there are other things that people can realize about themselves that they not necessarily thought about before or not necessarily realized before and you do go through a period of when you sort of first start embracing it of learning what that means for you and learning about yourself and learning you know why certain things that were true of you in the past are were true of you in the past and you know it, you can change how you feel about this part of yourself as you learn more about this part of yourself, you, you sort of grow and it grows with you, just like every other part of your identity grows with you. Um, that doesn't mean that you've chosen for it to be a part of your identity, it just means that you're embracing it as part of your identity, rather than pushing it away or ignoring it or whatever it was you were doing before you decided to embrace it and, and to make it a part of who you were and, and to actually acknowledge that it was a part of who you were. Um, so yeah, I hope this makes sense. Um, I hope um, that you can sort of understand why I felt like I needed to, to do a blog like this and sort of um, talk about some of the things and some of the experiences that I, that I went through, which from my point of view are thoughts and feelings and experiences that I had because I was always non-binary, I just didn't have the words and the knowledge and the confidence that I needed to embrace the fact that I was non-binary, um, partly because I was growing up in the 90s. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not, I, I don't think any generation um, at the moment necessarily has these things particularly easy. It is getting easier and easier for people to um, learn about themselves and, and learn who they are from the younger and younger age and that is great and that's fantastic but we're still not quite there as a society yet. Um, I think a lot of people do still go through questions of periods of questioning themselves and try and learn about themselves and I think that's okay and I think you know it's okay not to have an answer to certain questions at certain points in your life and then to have answer, different answers to them at other points in your life because there is a lot of stuff that's going on and there is a lot of stuff going on internally within a lot of people that you don't necessarily have answers for right away you don't necessarily understand right away and it can take people a long time to understand things um and that there is nothing wrong with that and that you know that should be that should be encouraged and celebrated anybody who is taking the time to reflect upon the person that they are and to learn about themselves in whatever capacity that they are that should be encouraged and, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, people should be, you know, encouraged to be true to who they are and true to the core of who they are and to learn and to grow and to be open-minded and accepting of others doing the same. Um, and then I'm, I'm very much, you know, I'm, <laughs> as I said in my uh, one on Pride, you know, Equality is only equality when everybody has the same rights. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, um, 
everybody has equality when everybody has the freedom to discover who they are for themselves in their own time <laughs> in their own time in their own way and when they have discovered who they are to have the same rights that they would have had if they'd made a different discovery i hope that makes sense all right okay um, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you have found it sort of interesting. I know it's been more of a kind of a rambly sort of one. I apologise that my voice is really dry. I have filmed this first thing in the morning um, before my shower, after my exercise. That's just simply because I just wanted to do it now whilst I was thinking about everything um, and whilst I had a very clear idea of all the things that I wanted to say. Um, so yeah, I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time. Um, hopefully next time I might be on a different subject and, or I'll be on the same subject, I don't know. Um, I'd, I'd like to maybe do something about my writing again because, you know, this is the point of the channel. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, well, with that said, I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!